Dr. Carlos Gordon uh, used to be the chairman in uh, Tel Aviv Hospital, Department of Neurology. Uh, he has one of the biggest group of Machado Joseph uh, disease in the world. He's have been studying this kind of patient for many years. Thank you, Carlos. Okay. Hopefully, what happened here? Just a minute, we will try. Okay. okay, can you see my presentation? And you can hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you very much for the invitation. So uh, I will talk about the vestibular function in uh, Machado Joseph disease or spinocerebral ataxia type three, and uh, specifically in on uh, angular vestibular ocular reflex impairment with, with preserved sacular function in Machado Joseph disease. And I will suggest that the horizontal um, BOR impairment could be a possible biomarker of the disease. And these are my colleagues and collaborators. And the data that I will present is uh, some of the data is part of a collaborative project uh, from uh, Europe and South America to identify and characterize age-related genetic modifiers and biomarkers of neurodegenerative process in Machado Joseph disease. And uh, as you all know, uh, spinocerebral ataxia or Machado type three or Machado Joseph disease is the most common form of autosomal dominant cerebral ataxia. It is caused by an expanded repeat disease with the CAG repeat in the ataxin gene in chromosome, uh, chromosome 14. It has a high prevalence in Portugal and the Azores island. And in Israel, we have a, a population of Jewish coming from Yemen. These, those are Yemenites Jewish with the uh, typical vestiment. Uh, and just to localize you in all over the world. This is Israel. This is the somehow here, the Azores Island, and this is the Yemen. Okay. And in fact, everything uh, started the study with the head impulse test that uh, you all know. And just I wish to remind you that uh, the head impulse test was described by Michael Almaghi and Ian Courtois in 1988 as a clinical sign of canal paresis. They described the sign as a sign of peripheral vestibular loss. And in fact, we published this in uh, 2003, the first, it, this is, was the first description of the impaired VOR by the bedside head impulse test in Machado Joseph disease. In fact, this is the first descrip description of the Machado Joseph disease in, in Israel in 1994. This was described before uh, the use of genetic test. And this was confirmed thereafter that all these patients had the same mutation of the Machado Joseph disease. Uh, disease. So again, in this uh, uh, study, we uh, describe patient with uh, 
impaired uh, head input test. They also have uh, canal paresis, horizontal canal paresis. And uh, we compare this with other families with cerebellar ataxia, and we uh, uh, found this only in patients with Machado Joseph disease. And this is the one of our patients. I, the same video that I saw, I show last week, you can see the saccadic smooth pursuit, gaze evoke nystagmus in this patient. Those are typical characteristics of the eye movement disorder in this patient. Also, the, sac the saccades in this patient are slow. They are patients with normal uh, uh, saccades with a normal velocity. And here you can see, appreciate the head impulse test that is really very impaired bilateral. So this is a positive head impulse test bilateral in one of our patients. And uh, in fact, we confirm this then with uh, uh, some uh, studies using the surgical evaluation and from a clinical uh, study of a, an examination of uh, 53 person, um, patients in our clinic, uh, we confirm that we can detect uh, uh, the VOR uh, deficit by the head, but the bedside head input test in about 90% of our patients. So concluding that we confirm that this VOR deficit, in fact, is part of the uh, Machado-Joseph disease phenotype. Uh, we confirm also then, uh, uh, we did a, a, a collaborative study with uh, uh, Portugal, Spain, and Argentina, and us in Israel, that this is the first video head impulse test in a Machado Joseph disease that confirmed that the, you can detect the uh, VOR deficit in the horizontal plane by the video head impulse test. And since the first description, uh, our first description of the uh, deficit of the VHIT, uh, the, sorry, the head impulse test in Machado Joseph disease as a, a neurologist, we ask, okay, where is the lesion? And uh, we suggested that the lesion is central and it could be in the medial vestibular nucle nucleus or and the nucleus prepositus hypoglossi the lesion in this part of the brainstem could explain also the part of the eye movement disorder and the uh, vestibular uh, deficit or areflexia. Uh, this patient have no any signs of uh, uh, loss of audition, auditory signs or other uh, signs that could be part uh, affecting the peripheral vestibular system. And as you know, the ocular ab motor abnormalities are very frequent in uh, all forms of uh, spinocerebellar ataxia, but it seems that the uh, VOR deficit is characteristic of the Machado Joseph disease. But I, as I told you, uh, all those uh, previous studies were uh, dealing on the horizontal VOR, and we have no any information regarding the anterior and posterior canal responses. That means the vertical VOR. Also, studies uh, on uh, otolytic function are very scarce and contradictory. So we are dealing with this with several questions. So what happened with this patient? What about the vertical VOR? What about the otolytic? And we, I will talk about the saccular function. And 
with uh, this kind of uh, information and data that we have collected, we uh, really uh, suggest that uh, uh, VOR or the uh, horizontal VOR deficit could be a neurophysiological biomarker of the disease and very useful for detecting even presymptomatic uh, patients and the progression of the disease. And why biomarkers are important in neurodegenerative disease, uh, this, uh, the, the, the finding of a biomarker is a very important or a major goal, not only in Machado Joseph disease, but also in all clinic, clinical research in uh, neurodegenerative diseases. We need a good biomarker to detect the early and even presymptomatic stages of the disease. We need a biomarker to assess the disease progression. And as I told you, this is essential for uh, future clinical trials that can uh, assess the, uh, the uh, effect of treatment or some drugs. And in, in fact, the ideal biomarker or the best biomarker must or should be easy to quantify, to measure, and very reproducible. It uh, uh, should change linearly with the disease progression and closely correlate with established clinical pathological parameters of the disease. So, as I told you, I will try to convince you that the horizontal VOR gain is a very good or an ideal neurophysiological biomarker for Machado Joseph disease. And back to the head impulse test. So today, the gain of the VOR uh, could be easily and accurately quantified using the video head impulse test, also the horizontal and both the horizontal and vertical VOR, uh, using fast cameras that are recording the eye movements response to the abrupt head rotation. Uh, the video his impulse test is uh, very far, fast, short to perform. In about 10 or 15 minutes, you can measure very accurate, accurately. It is easy to perform. It's, it is comfortable for the patient. And being a, a reflex needs a, a minimal cooperation of the patient. And it is very hard to fake. And in fact, uh, I will show you uh, our data of uh, 24 uh, MJD patients, three presymptomatic carriers. So they have the genetic test and they are positive for the genetic test. That means that they will develop some uh, where they are uh, the, the disease and the data of 21 healthy control. Uh, all the patients had a, a detailed clinical uh, neurotological examination and also a, a, the scale for the assessment and rating of ataxia score, that is the SARA test or the SARA score. And the horizontal or vertical VR gain was uh, detected or was measured by the video head impulse test. We also perform cervical uh, VEMS, cervical vestibular evoked myogenic potential. And uh, 14 of these 24 patients were uh, already tested again after nine, nine to 20 months of the first examination to see the progression of the impairment of the VOR and also the impairment in the SARA score. And here you can see a, a, the results of one patient. In fact, this is the patient I show you in the video uh, that have almost a absent horizontal 
a VOR and very, very low gain in the uh, left anterior, right anterior, left posterior, uh, and, and right and uh, posterior canals. And this is the uh, VOR or the gain of the, the normal VOR on, of and healthy control of the same age of this patient. And here, I, you can see the uh, VHIT uh, uh, results of two presymptomatic subjects that, in fact, they already show some signs, sorry, some signs of impaired uh, uh, if you are this patient, are, uh, these subjects are totally asymptomatic, and uh, the 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 Sarah they have no any Sarah score. So uh, 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 the neurological examination and the cerebellar examination is totally normal. And here you can see the same patient with a normal CBEM CBEM and a control that also has a normal uh, uh, CVM. And in fact, the uh, Machado Joseph disease have normal CVM. Also, they have a, a, la, the latency and the amplitude were totally normal in a Machado Joseph patients, I, I need to tell you that uh, CVM were absent in five of uh, the 21 controls and in two of the 24 Machado Joseph disease. All these uh, subjects with absent uh, uh, VEMPs were uh, older than 60 years old. And this is a finding that we know that is uh, normal. There are people uh, healthy uh, uh, people that uh, you can not uh, find a, a CVM uh, response, and most of these uh, subjects are more than uh, 60 years old. So, going to the VOR gain, and you can see here, you can appreciate here the VOR gain of all semicircular canals in the controls and the Machado Joseph disease patient. As you can see, controls have really almost 0.9 or 0.95 gain in the lateral canal and about 0.8 gain in uh, uh, the vertical canals, and the Machado Joseph disease has had, in fact, a, about a 0.5 gain the, and, or 0.6 gain in the vertical canals. And if we uh, make the calculation of the average of all horizontal and vertical canals, you can see here the horizontal and vertical canals, the gain of the horizontal and vertical canals in the control population. And here in the uh, Machado Joseph disease that have about half of the gain or 0.6 of the gain of uh, uh, the controls compared, compared to the controls, all this comparison, comparison were uh, statistically significant. So, uh, so uh, starting uh, the first results, uh, you, I, I am saying again that the VR gain was significantly lower in Machado Joseph disease versus, versus uh, control uh, for both the horizontal and the vertical semicircular canals. We did a receiver operating characteristic analysis of the horizontal VR gain, which revealed a high level of area under the curve 
of 0.9, that means being statistically greater than 0.5, and thus confirming or showing that the horizontal viewer gain is an excellent classifier to differentiate between the Machado Joseph disease and control. And if we look at the correlation of the horizontal VOR gain versus SARA score for the first visit, that means 24 patients. So we can see that the a correlation is negative. The higher the SARA, the lower the VOR gain. And this is, is, is uh, statistically significant. And for the second visit, that are only uh, four, uh, uh, 14 patients, also this correlation uh, uh, is significant. And so, we take and we calculate the change uh, in VOR. That means the uh, VOR gain from the first visit minus the uh, VOR gain of the second visit and the same, same for the SARA score. And we did this correlation and the correlation is still significant meaning that the VOR, the gain with time is going lower while the SARA score is going uh, uh, higher. And again, this uh, correlation is uh, positive. So we will uh, summarize these results. Uh, all Machado Joseph disease patients had significant angular VOR decrease in both the horizontal and vertical planes. The three symptomatic uh, patients that we measure uh, already show some signs of impaired uh, VOR gain, while the CVM's response also latency and amplitude were normal in Machado Joseph disease. The SARA score was significantly correlated with the degree of the VOR impairment. And there was a significant decrease in VOR gain with a parallel or a concomitant increase of SARA score with time. So between the first and second test, Again, 14 patients that were, uh, uh, were uh, uh, evaluated between uh, nine to uh, 20 months after the first testing. And again, as a neurologist, we're asking, so where is the lesion here? And we suggest again that the lesion here is a selective medial and superior vestibular Nuclei, nuclei degeneration because the uh, semicircular canals input is going to the medial and to the superior subnuclei of the vestibular nuclei, while the uh, uh, saccular function is going to the inferior and to the lateral uh, vestibular uh, subnucleus of the vestibular nuclei. And this is supported but by some neuropathological uh, uh, studies of uh, in other uh, uh, laboratories or, 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 or centers that uh, show that there is a degeneration of the central vestibular system in, in spinocerebellar ataxia uh, type three, uh, uh, they did not differentiate which part of the vestibular nuclei is affected, but uh, from 
other uh, uh, point of view, in fact, we can see that the uh, medial vestibular nuclei is also more vulnerable than other part of the vestibular uh, uh, nuclei. Uh, uh, for example, uh, in uh, thiamine deficiency, in Wernicke encephalopathy. So, so uh, we suggest that the lesion or the neurodegeneration is there, and this can explain our findings. So I would like uh, to conclude that the angular VR impairment in horizontal and vertical planes seems to be a distinctive feature of spinocerebellar ataxia type three, and could be explained again by a selective medial and superior vestibular nuclei degeneration. So remember that the CVMs is normal. And we suggest, or this data support, the idea that uh, the quantitative horizontal VOR measures would be a neurophysiological and biomarker for detecting the appearance and progression of the neurodegeneration in Machado Joseph disease. So thank you very much. I would like also to thank the uh, patients, our MJD patients and families of uh, and the Israel Machado Joseph Disease Association. And most of these studies is supported by the uh, Israeli uh, uh, Ministry, Ministry of uh, Health and is part of the European South America South American Collaborative Project that I uh, told you before. So thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Gordon. It was a pleasure. It was a enjoyable, very good lecture. Thank you very much. We have, uh, I don't see any uh, questions from the attendees. Adolfo has a question, please. Thank you very much, Carlos. V very uh, nice and clear talk. Thank you. Um, I, 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 I'm sure we, we, we discussed this in the past, but you, you, you've gained a lot of experience in, in, more recently as well. If I remember correctly, uh, a, a condition that you know can sometimes get confused between SCAR three or, or, or Machado Joseph, as you call it, and 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 Canvas. Um, and if, but if I remember correctly, in in Canvas, uh, the VEMS are also abnormal or absent. So it's so your your work also would serve as a differential diagnosis. If you don't have, you know, quick access to genetic testing, which is of course the, the, the best way to classify many of the diseases. So would you agree with that? Uh, I have no experience in, in, in Canvas, uh, uh, but the assumption that in Canvas the degeneration is in the um, vestibular ganglion. So that the degeneration is peripheral and not central. Our assumption is that the in Machado Joseph disease the the the, the generation is central, not peripheral, uh, and uh, so probably in Canvas the 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 um, uh, CVMs are are uh, pathological. I cannot remind uh, an article saying this, but uh, probably yes, you are I, I, correct I because be, there because the lesion there is in the ganglion. Yeah. That makes sense. There is at least one article from uh, John Allum's uh, group in Switzerland showing uh, absent. I don't know if in many patients, but at least in one or two patients with canvas showing absent, which totally agrees with your rationale that is a, you know, it's a ganglionic disease uh, as well as central. So thank you. Thank okay. you. That was a great talk. Uh, I have a question. Do patients with yeah. Machado Joseph get internuclear ophthalmoplegia? Uh, no, really, uh, Jorge, this is a very nice question. No, they have no internuclear ophthalmoplegia. I, uh, in fact, I, I saw in, in some patient uh, 
something that looks that a, a something like a reverse internuclear of thermoplegia, of thermoplegia. That 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 means that they have a a a, 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 a deficit in in abduction, so in lateral gains, and then the the other eye is doing a nystagmus when trying to so so to make a, a, a going to the a side of the of the uh, of the gaze, uh, and I talk I think somewhat somewhere with David Z, and I, I, I tried to describe this, but I saw some patient I couldn't uh, really uh, uh, um, uh, uh, record the eye movements of this patient, but I have two or three patient that have again. Uh, problems with abduction and the other eye is doing this nystagmus when it's doing a deduction. So like the reverse. Yeah, it's, it's look like a reverse internuclear, internuclear thermoplegia. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Carlos. Whenever I see that phenomenon, whenever I see that phenomenon that can happen not only in degenerative conditions like you indicate, but even in, you know, like in things like MS, multiple sclerosis, um, I, I always assume that it's due to an additional uh, damage of the abducens nucleus. In other words, they have a yeah. supranuclear component plus a bit of component of the abducens nucleus, nucleus going wrong. But in the old literature, it used to be called um, reversed uh, or, or inverse uh, internuclear ophthalmoplegia. Yes, the, all, all papers actually use that term. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 uh, another thing uh, uh, concerning canvas, uh, uh, you need uh, to know that canvas is, is not a, a Machado Joseph disease, is a autosomal, autosomal dominant canvas is probably a, a, a autosomal recessive with, without or with a low penet penetrance. And, a, but I, very interesting, I have two or three families also coming from Yemen with cerebellar a, a signs. They are not a, a, they are not uh, uh, Machado Joseph, but two of these families uh, have also a, a vestibular a, a positive head impulse test. They probably look that the phenotype is like a canvas. <laughs> 